The Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project, SERA, has launched legal action against Governor Yesam Wike of River State and the government of President Muhammad Buhari at the Ecowas Court of Justice in Abuja over the brutal crackdown, repression and grave violations and abuses of the human rights of the people of River State. According to Serap, Governor Wike is using Executive Orders 1 and 6 2020 as instruments to violate and abuse the rights of liberty and freedom from arbitrary arrest and detention to a fair trial and to property, contrary to Nigeria's international human rights obligations, including under the African Charter on Human and People's Rights and the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. Serap contends that Governor Wike, with the complicity or support of the federal government of Nigeria carried out these demolitions without giving adequate notices, compensation, or affording the victims legal remedies. No date has been fixed for the hearing after suit. Joining us now is Executive Director Serap Adetokumbo Mumuni. Thank you for joining us on the news. Good morning. Good morning. Pleasure to have you join us on the news. Now, this is one case too many with high-profile individuals involved. Why did Serap take up this case? Hello? Let me ask the question again. Why did Serap take up this case? You see, when we say we are in a democracy, we should be careful the way we exercise our powers, which, is, which was bestowed on us by people because of the fact that we were elected as the elected representative of the people, we have a duty not to ride rough short over the people in the exercise of our powers. What happened in an attempt to enforce the lockdown to us as set up as done by the River State government is a deliberate and flagrant affront on the rights of the various people of River State. We have seen the way the governor acted. So all this does not give democracy a good name. This does not give Nigeria a favorable consideration in the eye of other people of the world. So that is the point why we are taking this case up. And we, are, we, are, we, we believe that we will take it up and we will make progress with it. All right, let's look at the legal action against uh, Governor Yesom Wike and the government of President Buhari over the brutal crackdown and repression. Um, the, the fact that it was launched at the ECOWAS Court of Justice, uh, why the choice of the ECOWAS Court of Justice for this particular case? What we intend to achieve by going to the ECOWAS Court, let me tell you the duration of the ECOWAS Court. Everybody within the West African sub-region once your allegation is a violation of any of the constitutional rights guaranteed by the Nigerian Constitution, you are entitled to go to ECOWAS court. And we believe that at the ECOWAS court, we will have the opportunity to put Nigeria uh, 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 on the fire, at least at the international sub-regional level, so that people who preside at ECOWAS court will see that it is not good to treat Nigerians, to treat Liberians, in the way and manner God wicked did, you cannot say you are enforcing a lockdown and you start destroying people's property, you start trapping down people. It's as, it's as if they were waiting for 
COVID to happen. It's as if they, are, they were waiting for lockdown to be announced. All right, let, so let's now let's, start. Let's, let's, uh, for the interest of time, in the interest of time, rather, uh, no date has been fixed for this um, hearing. But should the principal actors choose not to respond, what options are you left with? You said what? I said no date has been fixed uh, for the hearing of this suit, but should the principal actors that we've mentioned earlier choose not to respond, what options are you left with? Now, you see, the way, the way the court process works is that once you file a case in court, the other side, the defense, will be served. They are now bound to file their response to all our allegations. So that is the stage we have now. And I believe that once the corporate is served on them, they will be bound not to do anything that will overreach the court process. So, and I believe that ECOWAS court is another effective court. So that is the way it is now. If the powers to execute lies with our judicial system, some have argued that ECOWAS may not give the answers needed as they play advisory roles half the time. Does this bother you? No, 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 no. ECOWAS does not play advisory roles. ECOWAS court does not give advisory decisions. They give decisions that are effective and that can be enforced. And we obtain corpus of judgment against the, against the federal government at the ECOWAS court. They will, it was enforced. At a time, we, we won a case against the federal government, and our clients were paid. As a matter of fact, we had filed a, a case against the University State Government at the Equal Court earlier when the people of Bungu were, 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 were treated um, not too good. And our clients were paid based on the judgment of Equal Court. So it is not that the Equal Court gives advisory decisions, the Equal Court gives binding decisions. And the Attorney General of the Federation is this dedicated government official that the ECOWAS protocol says must enforce the judgment. So we are not having any problem about enforcement once we obtain the judgment at the ECOWAS court. All right, uh, Barista Mooney, thank you very much for joining us on the news. It's a pleasure speaking with you. It's a pleasure speaking with you.